Are you tired of going out in public looking like a stupid bastard? Well, not anymore. Cover up your shame and let JP put his fun time inside you with Egotastic Tees. What are you waiting for? Click on the link below to get wet with fashion. I'm going to like the way you look. Egotastic Tees! Hello, one. Hello, all. Is it too early for me to say... I told you so. It might be a little bit too early to say I told you so, but I am going to say I told you so. I've been talking about this since last year. Now it looks like the other fans of the Orville that are actual friends with production as I am have finally got the the, the, the news that I got last year that the Orville has been renewed, but there's no details yet. There's no details, but I'm guessing, this is just a guess, with the other friends of the Orville finally putting out the news of what they just recently heard, that we're going to get a, a real official announcement from Tom or Seth or anyone else that works on the Orville very, very soon. What is going on, you guys? Today is a very good day. What's up, Curtis Tate? Curtis Tate's on Twitter. That's right. This is the very first time I am multi-streaming to not only YouTube, right here on Talking the Orville, but on the Egotastic Fun Time Twitch channel, which you guys are gonna wanna, you guys are gonna wanna fill out that channel. Link is in the description below because this Saturday is our very first live stream. I'll be the very first live stream, I'll be also multi-streaming to help people find the Twitch channel. The Orville RPG tabletop game that we're going to be playing starting the campaign uh, Saturday, day after tomorrow, at uh, noon Pacific time. It's going to be a, a little bit of an extra long stream because we're going to be hanging out with you guys. We're also going to be learning about the game, and we're also going to be creating our characters. So all the players... We have four players. Uh, um, we're, we're doing the stream with Miniature Dragon Publishing, uh, which makes comics and games and all kinds of cool stuff. We're going to be doing the Orville RPG game that has been created specifically for the Orville and Orville fans. Click on the links in the description below to, to get caught up on that. Patreons, there's some special exclusive stuff that'll be downloadable just for patrons. Click on all that, all that good stuff. But the good news... The Orville, not a not a official announcement yet, but from the people that matter, not clickbait channels. Well, there's been a lot of clickbait channels over the years, and I point out all the ones I can find, or some of the ones. There's so many of them. This is not clickbait channels. This is uh, Mission Log, official friends of the Orville camp. Um, let me read it, actually. They, they posted it on Twitter. Uh, this is from Mission Log. Uh, this is the news you've been waiting for, folks. Our source, pretty sure I know who the source is, probably the same source that I got, uh, confirmed that the Orville is renewed for season four. There will be a wait for more news and dates, but we can confidently say that you will see our beloved cast and crew in the stars before you know it. Mission Log, they are an Orville channel podcast sci-fi thing they are friends uh, to the show i met them i met some of the people from mission log uh back uh, at the orville premiere in los angeles when seth invited me out uh uh took me out there I'm, i don't know if he took them out there but he took me out there uh, and i met them official fans and also planetary union central which is i think the very first orville podcast came out years ago when the Orville started. I think they started even before I started. Uh, they also say that uh, they uh, they have heard that the rumor is true, but of course they don't have any of the details yet. Um, I've been with a wink and a nod ever since last year during my, my weekly live shows telling you guys that I talked to the Orville camp on the phone and they left me with the impression that they are coming back for another season. Um, 
but of course there's no details. We got to, they said, you got to wait for, for an announcement. And man, we've been, I've been waiting months and months ever since I was told that on the phone. So I didn't want to put it out there as official news and then have nothing to show for it. So I just kind of been holding the torch for the Orville, trying to get as many eyeballs on the Orville as I can. And there'll be an update on that here in just a second as well. Pretty exciting update. Um, just trying to get people, uh, shuffle people towards the Orville and it's been working it's been doing great uh, but I didn't want to have to hold on to just something that I put out on the internet for months and months and months uh, uh, with nothing to show for it but now the hubbub is starting to reach reach around the interwebs and the fandom uh, as other true fans true believers true friends of the Orville um, are starting to make announcements so that means I can make announcements yeah, I was told on the phone by the Orville camp. Uh, well, first I was remember when they were doing the whole trying to get it renewed with the whole Disney, you know, they're having the me meetings with Disney. Um, I was on the phone with a lot of frustration. And then I got another call a few days later. Oh, we're renewed. We're coming back. It's just going to be a long, it's just going to be a wait. How long the wait is? I don't know. Um, I hear some of you. I can't check this myself because currently in my current situation, I don't have Disney Plus. But some people I've I've heard say that the Orville was removed from Disney Plus. I don't know if that's true. You guys are going to have to check that check on that one for me and let me know in the comments. And then I'll have uh, comments on that. But we don't have an official announcement. But now that the other uh, uh, ramblings from not ramblings, but rumblings from the other Orville fr uh, friends is coming out. That means we're getting closer. That means uh, I'm assuming they were told they were allowed to 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 say something. I wasn't told that I couldn't say something. I just chose to wait because I knew it was way too early. And until there's an uh, an official announcement that I could show people. Uh, not to, to announce it too early, but I've been doing my best with a wink and a nudge. Uh, those of you who have been tuning into the live stream know they've heard me say it, that I was left with the impression they're coming back. Uh, and that's why I've been hanging on so long. Every day, all day, for months, for years, really, people saying, why are you promoting the Orville so much? Why are you holding on to hope, holding on to hope that they're coming back? Because I knew they're coming back. It's just, you know, they got to come back when they're ready to come back. All right. Barry is checking Disney Plus right now. And Bell, it was still on Disney Plus the, the first this week. I don't know. What's up, Piano Dean? Long time no see. Piano Dean is driving. Oh, man, do I know about driving. Uh, uh, quickly, all you uh, awesome su uh, super chatters out there. You cannot super chat this channel right now. Once again, YouTube has demonetized this channel uh, for another three months. I'm able to reapply June 23rd, which is the day after my birthday. So that'll be a fun thing to celebrate that after my birthday, I can re <laughs> reapply for monetization. Um, I think it'll be good, though. I mean, there's there's there'll be a lot more Orville news coming up this summer. So having a monetized channel will will will, will work more this summer right now. Right now, it's about JP uh, just working his butt off on the streets <laughs> every day. Uh, nothing dirty, just driving around, picking up riders to drive them around uh, Monday through Friday, 12, 12 hours a day, 60 hours a week. Unless I also add more hours on, on, on Sundays, which I sometimes do. That's what it's about now. So I can get everything caught up and be fully ready to blast off. Uh, into the Orville universe uh, starting the summer. But, of course, we'll be catching up here uh, throughout that entire time. But I'm going to be spending a lot of time trying to uh, build up Egotastic Fun Time channel. Link in the description below. Put out content on there. But Orville-related stuff will always be right here on Talking the Orville. That's what I decided ever since I got demonetized. The purpose of this channel is, is to help the Orville fandom grow. And it is working. John Burns, JP, so get working. I need my Seth interview fix. Oh, I'm sure I'll get a Seth interview once we get closer to the Orville coming out. Uh, Chris Smith says Patreon is better. Birthday celebration. What's up, Philip Gaming? 
Margo says, I have no idea why they keep picking on you, JP. Um, well, I never know for sure. I always have to guess. The first time they demonetized, I've been demonetized three times in one year. And it's three months per time. So basically pretty much the whole year. Um, the first time they demonetized me, totally understandable. There was a little piece of music in my end screen that I thought I could totally use. YouTube said no. And it doesn't matter what the Orville says, what they allow me to do. It's what YouTube says I can do. The second time they demonetized me, I, I was thinking it was because I was moving all my shorts from one channel to another channel. Uh, maybe that was it, but also maybe not. This time they demonetized me, I am guessing that it's because um, I have so many shorts that I make. I make a lot of YouTube shorts to promote the Orville. And it's working. In the last 28 days, I have gotten 40 million views uh, for the Orville shorts content that I put out. That's 40 million eyeballs looking at the Orville, thinking about the Orville, thinking about maybe I should watch the Orville. And it's been happening a lot. I've gotten 26,000 new subscribers in the last 28 days. Uh, but it's all it's it's all demonetized now because apparently from what i believe i don't know for sure the content that i'm putting out for with the shorts is allowed by youtube but it's not allowed to, to be monetized because all my orville shorts are a bunch of footage from a tv show that i re-edit and reorganize and this this, and that which i thought would be okay it's okay just not to monetize and i finally got a little list of rules from youtube that i found the do's and the don'ts. One of the don'ts is uh, don't make a bunch of videos with, you know, make mostly of scenes from TV shows or movies. Don't do it even if you have permission. So I was under the assumption I had permission, probably do, uh, but it doesn't matter to YouTube. You can do it, but don't do it even <laughs> if... If you want to be monetized, even if you have permission to use the content. So YouTube is basically a bunch of F words. You guys think of every F word you can think of. Uh, that's YouTube. You guys. Barry says it's still on Disney plus. Okay. That's good to know because I prefer the Orville, uh, the new season of the Orville, especially to be on Disney plus because it has a much wider reach worldwide. Um, uh, so I'm I'm not going to guess as of yet that it's moving to another streaming service or anything like that. I'm going to go with my original prediction that it's staying on Disney. Disney is just waiting until uh, they have enough money to throw at the Orville. And, you know, the production has a lot to, to do in order to, to bring forth a fourth season. Uh, so I'm hoping that we're staying with Disney Plus. Whatever opinions you have with Disney Plus doesn't matter. I just they have a wider reach More eyeballs on the Orville. That's, that's good to me. Uh, Darth Thor, so mad. They took the Orville off Disney Plus. I don't pay for Hulu. Well, so they're saying it's also, it's still on Disney Plus. Maybe there's certain accounts or certain regions they took it off, or maybe they didn't take it off at all, and it's a, it's a April Fool's prank that everyone fell for the other day. I don't know. I just know I can't look it up because I, I don't have Disney Plus right now. Philip Gaming says I have Hulu, not Disney Plus. And David Chastity, Chastity says Hulu and Disney Plus are the same app in the UK. Who knows? Maybe Di Hulu and Disney Plus will be the same app everywhere by the time the fourth season comes out. Because all these streaming services are just merging together because every streaming services service made a huge mistake. They all have too much content. There's too many streaming services. There's too many shows, too many movies, and not enough people to watch that stuff or to subscribe to that stuff. Or even if they want to subscribe to a certain service, they can't because they got their money into these other services that they need. Too many services. <laughs> uh, J-Dog is also checking Disney+. Plus. Thank you very much, J-Dog. Let's see, my big mouth, tin foil. If it's not on D Plus, but on Hulu, Hulu is still technically coned by Comcast at the moment. Uh, who are the owners of NBC? So perhaps it's being renewed at Comcast. Therefore, the NBC 
Peacock. That's another prediction I have. I would love it to go up. I love Peacock, you guys. I think Peacock's great. Uh, Peacock is basically MC, which is Comcast. Comcast still has a, a partial partial ownership of um, of Hulu. I, um, I'd be fine if it went to Peacock, but Disney Plus has the wider the wider audience. Now, if it comes to Peacock and you don't have Peacock, it'll be available on some stream, streaming service in your area. But right now, I'm still hoping for Disney Plus. But if it's been removed from Disney Plus, that's not a good sign for it to be on Disney Plus. Movie Mouse. I have it on Disney Plus in Canada playing a happy refrain right now. All right. Move, Movie Mouse is playing it on Disney Plus right now. A happy refrain is a great episode. Oh, J Dog says Orville is not on Disney. So in J Dog's region, the Orville is not on Disney. So that leads me to believe certain regions are being changed, changed around, changed out. The Orville's been removed from some regions, kept on other regions. Is that a good sign or a bad sign? David Kelly, Disney will screw it up. No thanks. Well, they didn't screw up season three, and they were the they were the ones who paid for everything. Season three was paid for and produced by Disney. Just so everyone knows, because when it comes to the Orville, Seth has control. It doesn't matter uh, who's produce, uh, who's sending in them, giving them paycheck to make it. Seth has control and is always going to do right by the show. What's up, Bandana? There's a lot of names in here that I haven't seen in a long time. It's very good to see you all. Darth Thor, how is JP doing? JP is working his A off because I got demonetized. I can't handle it this time. Being demonetized, I can't survive. I can't survive it. I barely got through the last time. And uh, so I'm like, you know what? I have to make a change. And that change is I'm quiet quitting YouTube full time. So I'm still using, I'm still going to be on YouTube. I'm still going to make content for YouTube. I'm still going to do these live shows, uh, but I'm going to do it for fun. It's a, a side gig uh, that hopefully might help, help pay the bills. But it, if it doesn't, that's fine because I'm here to have fun. I always enjoyed my, my uh, content better uh, when it was just for fun. So right now I'm just working. Um, I, I just, I found out through my calculations that driving ride share Monday through Friday from like six in the morning to six at night is the best option I have right now. And then I can take Saturday and Sunday off Sunday, Saturdays, some Saturdays, one Saturday, or I don't know, my, the schedule might change, but once a month, we're going to be doing the Orville RPG game streamed on Twitch, sometimes streamed on here as well, multi-stream. Uh, it's a fun new thing that I discovered, multi-streaming. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be playing the Orville RPG game, kind of a Dungeons & Dragons uh, type of scenario, Magic the Gathering type of scenario, but with the Orville. And the, the game has been completely created by Miniature Dragon Publishing, who will be uh, joining for the stream. Woody, what's going on? Uh, Woody is going to be helping with the uh, RPG game. Our first stream is day after tomorrow, noon Pacific time uh, on Twitch and right here. And then hopefully the stream here will help bring people over to Twitch so that they can uh, join us for the campaign throughout the year. We're going to be playing it all 2024. And we'll have, uh, uh, I guess we're doing four players, Woody. Woody is the game master. Uh, so we'll, we'll have uh, me, Woody, some other players, Woody's bringing in, but also special guest, not this Saturday, but for the other streams, uh, PJ from Orville Nation uh, will be one of the players. So you can talk with me, Woody, the rest of the players and PJ all about the Orville and all about whatever else is going on in the world. That I don't know, Curtis Tate. I, I assume eventually Curtis Tate asks, is season three coming out on DVD? I assume eventually, hopefully on Blu-ray, hopefully on 4K Blu-ray. Huh? Um, but as of right now, I have seen no news of the Orville uh, coming out on DVD or Blu-ray. Maybe that'll be one of the things that gets figured out 
as a way to help promote season four when it eventually comes out. Ah, David Chastity says Disney Plus are throwing everything at Doctor Who at the moment. Yeah, I mean, who knows what Disney's up to as far as uh, um, as far as the um, studio stuff they got to do to make money. Maybe they're like, okay, you know, instead of having a million shows at once, we'll highly promote one show at a time, and eventually, hopefully, that show will be the Orville season four. Woody says, correct. I specifically went with four so we would have room for a guest. All right. That sounds good. <laughs> Barry says, what's DVD? Also can be, can, that can also be considered uh, a Star Trek joke. What is Kiss? What is DVD? Philip Gaming is also waiting for the Orville season four DVD Blu-ray. Andre, what's going on? Andre says, JP, you should get a guest role in season four. That would be great. I would love to do anything with C on season four, even if it's behind the camera. If they need someone to sweep, to, to pass the coffees around, I'd do that too. But it would be great to have a little, just a little background. I'm an alien type of character uh, on an episode of the Orville. Kroom says Disney Plus in the UK need Blu-ray of season three. Now it's not physical media, but you can also purchase season three of the Orville on Amazon, on Amazon Video. You can you can own it on Amazon digitally, but there's no physical media yet. Curtis Tate, Disney ruins everything. I'm a big fan of uh, Disney theme parks. I grew up at Disney theme parks, so theme parks, that's that's my um, that's my wing of the Disney uh, corporation. That's the wing that I love is, is the theme parks. Though you got to know when to go. You can't go when everyone else is going. You got to go when no one else is there. <laughs> John Burns, you could be the full beard barber. Yeah, I'll barber up some some folks. Oh, what species um, am I playing as? I'm thinking for the Orville RPG game, I think I haven't looked through the, the entire uh, races uh, that are available and all, all the ins and outs. Um, you can download all the race information and character and game information on the Patreon page, on the Egotask Fun Time Patreon page, patrons only. Uh, but I think I want to be a Retepsian. I've always had a joke about being a Retepsian. And uh, uh, Lex Kazar, uh, son of John Kazar, who was also one of the, uh, I don't know if maybe he still is, one of the uh, uh, part of the art department, concept design department for the Oroville. I was chatting with him a uh, long time ago. This is back maybe season, the middle of, between season one and season two, I'd interviewed him. And uh, we were talking about me being a Retepsian, but he said I have to keep my beard if I ever if I was ever a Retepsian. I said no problem. All right, Samantha C. I bought three seasons of the Orville from Amazon Prime. That's how many seasons I have of the Orville on Amazon Prime as well. Philip Gaming says I accidentally said season four because it was on my mind. But don't you want season four on Blu-ray? I want it. I would hope that you would want it too. As, but we got to have season three first, right? All right. Uh, Stu Winfield says the Orville is still up and running on Disney Plus in the UK, at least for me anyway. Ian Slater, we should start a hashtag for JP. JP Orville, JP on the Orville, hashtag JP on the Orville. There you go. <laughs> Barry says, do you know how hard it is to get blue out of a white lampshade? I don't. I hear it's really hard, but don't. Um, Chet, the bringer of death. It might be on Hulu. Uh, Hulu, Hulu and Disney Plus are merged now. Um, I'm thinking... If it's still on Hulu, but not everywhere on um, 
Disney Plus. Maybe it's maybe Disney Plus International location still has it, uh, but not the United States, which is usually how these things used to go. Maybe their contract ran out for the for having the the Orville in the United States, but it's still available because basically Disney owns Hulu, so maybe and Hulu is supposed to be the you know, the Orville's a Hulu original. It's not considered a Disney original, a Hulu original. So maybe um, uh, they're keeping it on Hulu in the United States, but internationally it'll be available all around the world, which is what we originally thought uh, way before season three even started. That's what it was originally supposed to be. And then on August 10th, 2022, they added it to Disney Plus everywhere. So I don't know, maybe, maybe the the license ran out and had to go back to the original plan. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's not bad news as much as people want to say, Oh my God. So this happened. I'm sure nothing bad is happening. We, uh, would we get a different voice actor for Yoffit or a new, uh, gelatin character? Uh, we've been under the impression for a while. And this is in Orville Canon that when, uh, a jelly, um, uh, reproduces it goes through mitosis where it doesn't you know have one jelly that becomes another jelly uh, that puts out another jelly one jelly splits in two and becomes two new jellies so i'm guessing that well i'm pretty damn sure i mean what else would you do that if they want to keep a jelly character on the show uh that that's what they'll do they'll just have Yafit split into two and become two new characters, which will require two new voice actors. Uh, maybe one of the jellies stays on the ship. One goes off to have adventures. Who knows? Uh, but I'm pretty sure Yafit's going to split because that's already part of the Orville universe canon. A Nigerian landowner. The Orville is like methadone for a family guy addict. Isn't it, though? Ian Slater says, JP on the Orville. Hold on, you guys. One of my lights is acting up. Woo! Let me turn it down a little bit. Sometimes these lights, I don't know why, sometimes they'll just get brighter or they'll change their hue. It's really weird. Uh, Chet, the bringer of death. I swear there's a rumor that the Orville is canceled every time Seth, Seth breathes. Oh, it's true. The in, that's what's called the internet. The internet are the naysayers of humanity. And uh, the internet has been saying the Orville has been canceled ever since the end of season one. Even when season three was about to premiere, the internet was saying the Orville was canceled and there's not going to be a, a season three. Obvious BS, but that's the internet. Unfortunately, too many people get pranked by this, uh, by basically the crap that is put out on the internet. This I can tell you from Mission Log, from Planetary Union Central, these are not channels that would put out clickbait. This is the real deal. These are channels that care about the Orville, that are friends with the Orville crew. Um, and uh, I guess they basically, they finally got updated. I got updated last year, but I didn't want to, make an official internet <laughs> announcement until there was some proof because I know what that leads to. It's already led to a bunch of people saying, Oh, JP, uh, the Orville's not coming back. This is that. And the whole, and, and no matter what I put out, they always chime in. Nope, that's not true. There's no proof of that. It, it's canceled. This isn't that I've been putting up with it every day for as long as I can remember. And uh, but I just had to keep quiet saying, hey, just sorry you weren't part of the conversation, um, but I knew it was coming back. Just waiting. Now we're just waiting for uh, the official announcement from Seth or Fuzzy Door or Hulu, Disney Plus, Tom Constantino. Uh, those are the people that are there to put out the official statements. The rest of us are here just to talk about it. Not that I know. David Chastity asked a great question. This is something I'm, I've never been worried about, uh, but a lot of people are worried about this. Have any of the cast got other high-profile roles right now? No, not a single one that I'm aware of. Um, and, and 
it, acting, it's hard to get an acting gig. Even if you're famous, it's hard to get something that's long lasting. If any of the cast of the Orville gets some good gigs, they're not going to be very long lasting gigs. There might be a, a cameo on this or a, a, a role in a film, which only takes however long it takes to film. No big deal. Or um, a couple episodes of a TV show. Um, I'm sure they'll all be ready uh, to film and become a full on ensemble cast uh, that are going to be in all the episodes when it's time to, uh, to return to the studio. Even Adrian Palicki. I am not worried at all. I am sure Adrian Palicki will come back when she's given the offer to work and to do acting, which she's good at. And I love her character. I love her as the character. Uh, and uh, unless she gets some big high profile thing like you're talking about, which is very hard to do. <laughs> I don't care what what actor uh, you are. It's very hard to do to get something that lasts more than a few weeks to a few months. Um, I think she'll be back because she everybody loves her. The cast loves her. She loves them. Um, she might just uh, 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 try to get a better contract. Easy peasy. I believe they're all going to come back. I believe they're all going to come. I'm 100% sure they're all going to come back. And with Adrian Palicki, I'm 95% sure. Because you, you never know what could happen. But everyone loves her. She loves everyone. Uh, she, she had a legitimate gripe about how long it takes. So I get it. But I think she'll be back. She's not going to want to miss out. Andre says, I hope for season seven plus. Me too. I mean, uh, for us sci-fi fans, Star Trek in the 90s started the whole seven season trend. Uh, uh, TNG, Deep Space Nine, Voyager all got their seven seasons. And we're all like, yeah, seven seasons. That feels about right. That feels good. Um, so for the Orville, I want to double that. I want 14 seasons. To make up for uh, <laughs> the treachery that was put upon Star Trek Enterprise that only got four seasons. And they should have gotten at least seven. Ah, Barry says, how is fan film episode going, JP? Well, I have, uh, for those of you who don't know, I've been put in charge of writing uh, the Orville uh, fan film. Uh, by And I'm, I'm working with Aries Studios to put up put out a high quality Orville fan film. I got a great story. Um, I'm still putting the story together. Writing it is tough because I do, because being demonetized, I do have to spend a lot of time uh, working outside of this house, away from this computer. Uh, so it is hard to find time to, to, to uh, chip it out of, of the, the writer's rock. The, <laughs> to, trying to make a statue here. Uh, but I'll get there. Eventually, things will get caught up. I won't have to work. You know, I'll get remonetized, which will allow me to uh, afford to have a little bit more time uh, to do the creative things. But the Orville script is a high priority. So I'm going to, uh, at, at some point, I'm going to say, you know what? I can't work. I got to write some stuff down. I got to write this story down more. But it's coming together. I just want it to be amazing. I want us. Uh, I want to impress the hell out of Seth MacFarlane. I want him to see it and go, "Damn, JP, I guess you do need to come over here to the Orville, to the Fox, or not Fox. I doubt they film at Fox. To whatever the Orville studio, whatever studio they're filming on, you need to come over here and help us out with some stuff. You need to help us out with season five, JP. I just want him to." Um, to be honored to have created such uh, an awesome universe that we all love so much and that I absolutely adore. I can't get enough of the Orville. Like when I'm making uh, the shorts, I'm watching stuff I've seen a million times and I love watching it again. And I still see things I haven't seen before. Plus, and says, plus the time it's taken just to get season four. Yeah, the Orville has a, such a rough time getting that renewal. At least 
Orville fans have to <laughs> have a tough time, uh, have a rough time having to wait to hear about a renewal. Uh, my mom keeps texting me right now. She's responding to something. I'll text her back later. It's not super important stuff. Lone Puppy says you can uh, dictate ideas to your phone. Uh, I do this all the time for my own story writing. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I just uh, I just need to put some bigger, more awesome ideas into it because I want it to be just jam packed with awesomeness. And uh, the hope is is to have two episodes, maybe thirty minutes a piece. Um, probably a cliffhanger for the second one, and then a, re uh, a nice resolution for. For, uh, for the second episode. So maybe we'll get a full hour. So I got to write an hour of jam packed content, but I'll do it. You guys, I'm fired up. I'm just trying to get the time to do it. Uh, DC KP 20, even if the Orville gets canceled, our fandom would keep it alive forever. Renew the Orville. Absolutely. That is my number one creed when it comes to the Orville is no matter what happens to the Orville, it will never die because we're going to keep it alive, but we are getting more into Orville. Isn't that nice? I can't wait to have official uh, 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 schedule as to what the production is going to be, when they're going to start. Can't wait to get all that info so I can uh, bring it to you guys. And we can all celebrate together with our wonderful knowledge of what's going to happen to the Orville. Barry, uh, Barry says, it's been a long wait for that announcement. It's been a long wait for that announcement. <laughs> What's up, James at large on uh, on Twitch? Cheer 50. Hey, thank you so much. Hey, man, I'm a big fan of the Orville. I had an idea for an MMO game for the Orville online. I think Seth would like. Oh, I, I Seth is excited for all fandom created Orville content. And then uh, this Saturday, we're going to be playing the Orville RPG game for the first time. This Saturday is session zero, which we're all, all the players are going to be um, uh, live streaming uh, on Twitch. And uh, for this, at least this first time right here on YouTube at the same time, we're going to be learning about the game. We're going to be creating our characters and then, um, we're going to get everything ready so that, you know, we can start at least once a month for the rest of the year, stream this Orville campaign for this Orville RPG game. If you want to know more, just check out Egotastic Fun Times Patreon page. Samantha C., I agree so much. Samantha says, renew for multi-season, not just one. If any show deserves a multi-season renewal it's the orville for everything they've had to go through all the wait uh between seasons especially season three because they had to take a year and a half off they were in the middle of filming and then all of a sudden they had to evacuate the studio and they weren't allowed to return for a year and a half because of the whole worldwide pandemic that was going on and then of course it takes at least a year to film everything for the orville and then it takes uh, quite a bit of, of months to promote it and to edit it and get it all ready to, to be put up in front of our eyeballs. So give them a multi-season renewal. That way, once Seth finishes writing or, and every the whole writing team finishes writing season four, um, they can start digging their, their heels into what a season five might look like, what stories they want to get going on. <laughs> What's up, Bird? Bird's over on Twitch, you guys. Uh, uh, what are you doing here? I thought you gave Twitch up for Lint. Well, YouTube gave me up for Lint. So I and and uh, I have the new Orville RPG uh, live streams coming up starting this Saturday, which are going to be on Twitch because Twitch is a good place for that. Uh, so I got to do some Twitch stuff every once in a while now, which is fine because on Twitch I can. You know, it's monetized. It's uh, unlike YouTube. So, you know, I might be able to, to, to keep the lights on a little bit for when I'm streaming over there. 
And also, I got to start doing more live streams on the Egotastic Fun Time channel, link in the description below, because I got to start building content. Uh, not Orville content over there. Orville content will always be right here. Uh, but, you know, I got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, oh, I actually have a whole thing what I'm going to do for Egotastic Fun Time. I'm going to be documenting uh, my survival i'm gonna i'm trying to survive i've realized i've spent way too much time trying to appease the youtube out the youtube algorithm that i've put off all the other things that i want to do and like paying bills so i'm gonna be working my, my my tushy off for i don't know a year two years however long it takes to start getting uh, completely out of american debt i'm just gonna work 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 and then uh, content creation will be uh, the hobby on the side. Uh, and then, of course, once I start getting things paid off, then I'll start coming back to, to all the, the the cool content creation stuff. But with a new mindset. But right now, I, I have to work, 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 work. It's a, it's a whole thing. It's a whole other conversation. Ooh, where can you get a hat like mine? Uh, James at large asks. This hat is not purchasable. This was uh, sent to me back in season two. Not actually, no, this is not sent to me. They sent me another hat in season one. In season one, the Orville sent me an Orville hat. Um, I have it locked away somewhere. I wore it so much, it started getting a little ring around it. So I put it up out of sight. Maybe it'll heal itself someday. And in season two, um, I was given uh, this hat by a, a, a Fox affiliate. Uh, this hat was made only for the, the cast and crew of the Orville and for whoever they decided to send one out to. So you can't find this exact hat, but there are Orville hats out there. You could probably find some Orville hats, uh, official Orville hats, probably on Hulu.com on their store. I know they have a lot of uh, Orville uh, merch on there, or you can get, other types of or I have some Orville hats available at uh, uh, Egotastic Tees on um, Mixed Tees. You can get the hat that I made that says Orville fans. You can see the, the logo Orville fans. You can get that as a hat. Um, and then I also have some stuff over on, you can probably see on the YouTube stream off to the right <laughs> over there, uh, some uh, Renew the Orville designs that I have. And there's some, a couple more you can you can find it at the store. Ooh, also a console game in the future. I would love that. Right now, as far as digital video games go, there's um, the Orville 2D experience. What was that called? It's a 2D game. It's really fun. I, I live streamed it a long time ago. They're having a new one coming out, which is still looks like 2D, but it's in a 3D world. Very interesting. That's done by a uh, uh, Phoenix Gaming, I think they might have changed their name, but still Phoenix. Um, also, there's the Orville Fan Experience on Steam, which was done by um, was it Stage Nine, the com the company that made the the Next Generation ship, and then they got shut down because you know how CBS is, you guys. Well, they made an Orville version of that, and Seth was gung ho. He he, he they, they the Orville sent schematics and designs to the game makers uh, to to, uh, to make the Orville version of it. And man, you can explore the entire ship. You can fly the ship. You can fly the shuttles. You can be almost any race of character you want to be. Create your own character. You can have multiplayers go around pew pewing each other. But it's a sandbox game. But it's on Steam for free. Download it right now. Um, the Orville Fan experience. Highly recommend it. Barry says, do you think the Krill will ever join the union? Ooh, I don't know. I think we might be past that. With their current uh, leadership, absolutely not. I mean, they are our enemies. Maybe with the previous leadership, it was about to happen. And then um, uh, Talia came in and, and ruined that whole thing. But I think the Krill have done such horrible stuff. I don't know if they'll ever uh, have what it takes to be a member of the union. Plus, their society is so... I mean, even with the Mocklins, the Mocklins are so, like, backwards 
societal wise that uh, even Captain Mercer since season one is like these Mocklins, they're not really they don't really hold our values, um, but we needed their weapons. So, you know, the union was kind of turning uh, an eye to uh, to the way the Mocklins are because we wanted their weapons. But I don't know. I think the Mocklins have gone too far and the Krill have gone too far. I don't think I'd ever want them. Tell you the truth, they hurt my feelings. Stupid Mocklins and stupid Krill. Though I love, I love both races. They're a lot of fun. They're very interesting. I don't know if the Krill can be considered fun, but they're very interesting. World, world he says, and Among Us Orville mod would be cool. Orville, anything would be cool. If anyone is able to make, if any of you out there are able to make things, make some Orville things. The fandom wants it. Uh, Seth's loves the things that the fandom comes up with. What's up, Mark Lawrence? Hmm, my main account won't let me chat, even though dot, 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 even though I'm subscribed, but here is fine. Interesting. That's all computer stuff that I have no control over. It could be YouTube punishing you for some reason. Jake Krause, in my mind, there is no other way than renew the Orville. So many other shows, movies are boxed in on what we can do with uh, Orville. Outer space isn't even the limit. Yeah, when I was talking to uh, Mark Jackson, uh, uh, um, who plays Isaac, he was saying the Orville's not done. You, you'll never run out of stories. For that type of universe, that type of setup, you're never going to run out of stories. You can always just create something to discover uh, the the way all the characters interact with each other, there's always going to be something. Uh, there, there's no reason to ever have it stop because you're never going to run out of material. Ah, Barry says, I have to go back and read more of the World of the Orville book. That is so good, you guys. If if you don't have the World of the Orville, this came out after season one, really goes into depth. Um with all the information we had about season one, it goes into the characters, the races, the ships, production. It's a great, not only is it just a great book for a fan, but it's a great tabletop book. I have one packed away, safely packed away in my closet. I might bring it out at some point, but it's signed by Seth MacFarlane. He signed it and sent it to me. Um, so I have it very protected. I don't want anything to happen to it. But at some point, and I really do need to reorganize this room since with all the, the new streaming and stuff that I'm going to be doing, um, really need to reset this room. Maybe put some of my artifacts in the background. So we do have uh, Avis right here, you guys. Uh, this is officially screen used page from the Ancona, from the episode Krill, episode six, season one. Uh, this is the actual page you see. Uh, in that episode, or one of the pages, because there was a bunch. The other side of it has a bunch of, of, of Krillian, a bunch of Krill language on the back. Probably talking about how Krill are the best, everyone else sucks, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I can't read it. It's in Krill. Uh, but that's one of my favorite. That is my favorite artifact uh, from the Orville, you guys. What's up, Jimmy D? Uh, I was going through my stream library on Tuesday and I hadn't played that fan experience in a while. So I revisited it strangely. Now you mentioned it. I just walked around the ship for half an hour. It's really cool. Yeah. It's very screen accurate. The entire ship. I mean, they added, there's all the places that you're familiar with and they're all screen accurate, but there's also areas that they created specific specifically for the game. Uh, so you can keep exploring because, you know, we don't know the entire uh, makeup of the ship, what every room is. So they have extra rooms uh, that are cool. But man, the thing is very screen accurate. If you go on the bridge, you're looking at the panels, they are exact, exactly uh, uh, accurate from the show. Hey, Mark Lawrence says, ah, there we go. Also just sitting at PayPal your way. Hey, thank you so much for helping to support the show. Oh, wait, I clicked on the wrong thing, but I'll get it. All right, let me click on this real quick, and then I'll come back to DJ129. I like this multi-streaming. I get people from both sides. It's great. 
Uh, but yeah, Jimmy D says play. Well, I'm assuming uh, Jimmy's saying play the Orville fan experience on Steam. Do it. Uh, thank you very much, Mark Lawrence. The more help I get, the less the the more time I can uh, spend creating things and not driving around. But here we go. DJ129, are you excited for Seth's take on Naked Gun? That's his next big project before Oriole Season 4. Yes, I know he's doing Naked Gun. Um, yes, I am very in, uh, I'm interested. I'm a Naked Gun fan. I remember going to see Naked Gun movies. How many movies? They did a couple movies uh, in the theater way back in the day. I was young. Um, I remember seeing watching those movies in the theater. I've always been a fan of that style of comedy. Um, very interested to see what Seth plans on doing with it. Uh, but that's just a movie. We won't take too, too long, a few months to, to, to get that done. And, uh, and then we'll be ready for some Orville season four, but yeah, I'm excited for it. I'll definitely be checking it out. We'll definitely be talking about it. I'll probably be talking about it on the egotastic fun time channel since it's not specifically Orville. I want to keep talking to Orville with Orville stuff and then everything else I'll put over on egotastic fun time, including my struggle to survive, which is what I'll be chronicling uh, with all my egotastic fun time content. Basically it'll be a lot of car time videos unedited because I don't have time to edit anymore, but eventually I will have time to edit someday, but not right now. Andrew Forrest, will they ever get an Emmy? They certainly deserve it. Well, they've been nominated for 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 stuff over the years. Um, I don't remember if they won any. I mean, no Emmys, but I don't remember if they won uh, if they won anything for season three. I haven't kept. Tra I don't remember. <laughs> I kept track of it at the time, and now I don't remember. In my brain, they win all the awards. So sometimes it's hard to separate reality from <laughs> my fake memories that I come up with in my head. Andre says, I think an episode where Kermit the Frog gets animated somehow would be cool. That would. I mean, it can, it can, and it's easy. It can have an alien influence, uh, makes crazy things happen. It can be a, a environmental simulator type of situation, just like the episode Firestorm, which had the clown and the giant spider. And uh, the little spiders and uh, a room that just led into empty space and lots of other cool things that happen. <laughs> uh, it could be something like that. You never know. And Jimmy says, definitely play it because it's free, especially since it's free. I mean, if it was paid, if you had to pay for it, it's still worth it, but definitely worth it. Uh, the Orville animated, the Orville, um, the Orville fan experience is definitely worth it. It's free. All right, Pranakasha. What's up, Pranakasha? Pranakasha says, I finally watched the TED series. Woohoo! If you guys haven't watched the TED series uh, in the United States, it's available on Peacock, uh, which employs Seth MacFarlane uh, for the last couple of years. Um, the TED series. It was great. What was it? Six, seven episodes? Might have been, might have been six. I think it was planned for seven, but they uh, put two of the episodes into one. The went to one big episode. I think it was the the first episode. Uh, great. If you if you're a fan of Ted, you're definitely gonna be a fan of the Ted series. It's very adult though. Don't let your kids watch it. Unless you don't care, then let your kids watch it because they will become better people. Movie Mouse, holy milk cows. How did you manage to get uh, that page of the Ancana? Oh, that's a good question, actually. Um, this was given to me uh, by Tom Constantino. He, uh, I went and visited him uh, at, the at the Fox lot back when they were filming season three. Uh, they were in the middle of filming an episode uh, when I got there, he came out, him, uh, uh, oh God, a couple people came out, uh, but they come out and he handed me this. Uh, he goes, he goes, here's a page from the Ancana. He handed it to us like, oh my God. And it was mine. I didn't steal it. He gave it to me. Uh, 
they should have a truth or dare game based on Latchcomb. I agree. That, that deserves to be on, on the on the screen. Ooh, John Burns. John Burns says, and I don't know if this is just fanciful thinking or if it's actually true, it would work. Uh, naked Gun with Liam Neeson. That would work. First off, Liam Neeson is friends with Seth MacFarlane. Of course, they work together on A Million Ways to Die in the, and Die in the West, but they also work together on the Orville. Um, Liam Neeson has a cameo role in episode four, If the Stars Should Appear, season one of the Orville, where he plays, um, I can't remember the, the founder's name, the founder of the, the giant ship. Uh, he plays that character, uh, probably a little favor he's doing for, for, for Seth. Liam Neeson has a very dry sense of humor. At least he could play a dry sense of humor, just uh, uh, which is perfect for Naked Gun. If he's starring in Naked Gun, Liam Neeson, I would absolutely uh, love that. He's perfect for it. <laughs> Brian uh, Dawkins talking to Pranakasha Productions. I like Ted very much. Dennis the Truck was funny. I never expected that character on the show. That was a, a character that threw me for a loop. Uh, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but that character was great. And just totally out of nowhere. Oh, I got to I got to scroll. Um, Aka Surreal says, or AKA Surreal says, is the renewal for season four official yet or still speculation? Well, it's not speculation, but it's also has not been officially announced. It's right now being announced by official friends of the show. I'm a friend of the show. Uh, Mission Log is a friend of the show. Planetary Union is a, uh, a, a friend of the show. And they're all saying uh, that the Orville's that they heard their source uh, that the Orville is being renewed. Now I heard this last year, but I've been just kind of hinting at it with a nudge and a wink because I didn't want to announce that I, that I was told it's coming back uh, and not have anything, any sort of proof at all, because then the internet would have eaten me up. But I was told uh, but also t a lot of time has passed since I was told uh, that they're going to be coming back. Just don't know exactly when, but it, it'll, it'll be, hopefully they'll start. This is just me rambling. Hopefully they'll start filming this summer. And, uh, and then from there, they might be able to have, if they started filming this summer, we talked about this one of the previous streams. If they start filming this summer, they might be able to have, their first episode out by the very end of 2025, by my calculations. I mean, they could do it sooner or later, but by my calculations on how long it takes to uh, to make a season of the Orville from without stopping, because everything that needs to be done, my prediction is the very end of 2025, if they start this summer. Uh, if not, it'll probably be the beginning of or middle or late 2026, but it'll be later. Also, I do know I was told by them that all the COVID filming rules, because, you know, for season three, they had to follow a lot of COVID rules. Those rules are supposed to be in place until 2025. So maybe I'm just guessing here. I don't know anything. Maybe they want those rules to go away so they can get in there and really film the thing without having to, test every single day and wear mask or whatever who knows but maybe there's been updates to that rule ever since we've learned more and more about covid and what works and what doesn't work james at large says i can't wait for season two of ted i predict there will definitely be a season two of ted because season one um broke records for peacock it's the number it's the biggest Peacock original they have ever had uh, most amount of views, most amount of attention. This is and that uh, it did very, very well and still doing very, very well. So my prediction is that they're definitely going to want Seth to do another season of Ted, but that doesn't take long at all. Once it's written, it takes a couple months to film and then the rest of the people put it all together. And so it's, it, there, it won't be any De Orville delays because of a second season of Ted, but also 
who knows how long it'll be before they even do a second season of Ted. Archimedes Ray, as a kid at heart, you have a kid heart inside of you? Crazy. I have an adult heart. Uh, as a kid at heart, I watch everything. Oh, I wish I had the time to watch everything. I would watch so much more stuff if I had the time, which is why I don't have Disney Plus right now. I'm like, I'm not going to pay for it if I don't have time to watch any anything. I would love to have um, Paramount Plus right now to watch the latest season of Ghost or Ghosts. But I'm like, I don't got time for that. And so I'm not going to pay for it. So eventually when I do have time, I'll get one of them uh, free trials and I'll watch the entire season all at once. Movie Mouse. Leslie Nielsen is one of the great Saski comedians. He is from uh, Regina, same as Elise uh, L- uh, Less. I can't say that. Why can't I see that? Less for Q. <laughs> uh, she was in a role of an organic Kalon. Uh, in uh, from unmarked graves. Oh, does she play the uh, Levesque? Les Vesque. I just know the name Priya Levesque, which was played by Charlize Theron in episode five. Um, an organic came on. Was she the mom, or was she the the not secretary, but secretary type character uh, in the uh, that corporate world, Kalon world? Lone Puppy over on Twitch. Wonder if Seth will sneak anything of uh, Ted into the Orville. They watch shows on the main viewer. Yeah, they watched Seinfeld that one time. Maybe they could watch Ted. It'd be a great little cross promotion. <laughs> James Lars says, we can't talk about Vietnam. Secret Agent Bart Fargo. I want more Kalon Primary. Kalon Primary still alive. He's now technically friends with the union. Uh, Charlie Burke made Kalon primary think twice about what humanity is and what humanity cares about and how selfless humanity can be. They made Kalon primary go, hmm, maybe we shouldn't kill all these biologicals. Okay, DJ129 uh, has some info. Liam is already confirmed to be part of the cast for the Naked Gun reboot, apparently. Oh, I hope he's playing the main character. I think he would be perfect. And it would be great to have Liam Neeson uh, be in a comedy where he still can play that same, you know, uh, I have a certain set of skills. You know, that type of character, but in a comedic way, I think it would be great for his career. Because right now, he, the dude can only be cast in Taken Part 5 and Taken Part 6. And so every movie he does is Taken. So it'd be nice to see him uh, get something fancy but different. And, uh, Jimmy D over on Twitch says... Ted series is hilarious. My four-year-old son saw it on my planner and was like, dad, can I watch the Teddy pointed at Ted? I said, no, (laughs) I don't think, I don't think there was really any nudity in it, except for maybe a little bit of Scott Grimes's booty, but uh, uh, (laughs) verbally, it's a very naughty, naughty show. Secret agent Bart Fargo says the best sci-fi show on TV. It is. It is absolutely the best one. And that's what I've been saying. The Orville, the Orville, the best sci-fi around. The Orville, the Orville, I'll show you around. I love it. Bet your quantum squalors will lose their blues with the Orville. Mini-Me says what would be good would be a big guy and rusty comedy series on Netflix. Oh, good old Netflix. As long as the Orville doesn't do a new season on Netflix, though Netflix does save a lot of shows or make shows into things that they weren't before. Like Breaking Bad was only a huge hit. I mean, it's a great show, 
But Breaking Bad became a huge hit when they went to Netflix. But Netflix is so oversaturated with so much stuff now. I don't know if, if they hold that same power that they used to hold. Right now, I'm like, Orville, just be on Disney Plus Worldwide. Disney Plus Worldwide. Why? John Burns, Liam Neeson was in a show with Ricky Gervais. Uh, yeah, that was... Um, I loved his character. He played himself. Uh oh, oh, what was that called? Uh, he chats with Ricky about doing improv <laughs> improvisational comedy. Then he rejects everything improvisational and blames Ricky for scripts. It's such a funny scene. What was that show? Short. No, I can't remember. Work Davis is the star of it, uh, but it's a Ricky Gervais show. Highly recommend it. You guys, you you guys will know the name of it. Archmage Frey, what if they do Sympathy for the Devil as a stream movie to drop before season four? I don't think it would work, even though it's one of the best stories the Orville has ever, ever put out. Uh, Sympathy for the Devil, it's currently a, um, a, a, a novel available on uh, Audible. Link in the description below. Their best, it's one of their best stories. It's absolutely, in my opinion, their best story from season three, even though it didn't get made into a full episode because of a uh, worldwide pandemic. That's their best, but the Orville doesn't even show up until halfway into it. That's the only reason I think it, uh, it wouldn't work is because it'll start and there's no Orville there. And then an hour goes by and then the Orville finally shows up. Uh, great story though, but I don't think there's enough Orville in it to be considered uh, an Orville promotion. We'll just have to wait till it's an episode. Dennis, a lot of love for Dennis the truck. Joe Flippo would love to be an, uh, an extra on an episode of the Orville. Wouldn't we all? We should all get together. When they start filming season four, we should all just show up. I'll organize it. I'll organize the time and day. And then I'll say, okay, we're all going to show up and we're all going to ask if we can be on the show <laughs> and then maybe they'll, they'll usher us in and film us for a little bit and then just put it in the show. You know, if they have any group, uh, if they have anything where they need a lot of extras, uh, we could be those extras. You guys bird wants to know how is Nicola is coming into the house. Well, Nicola, my cat, she finally comes into the house again. Um, I got a new puppy last month. And the puppy likes to play with uh, Nicola a little bit too hard. Uh, still does. I have to get after her for playing a little too hard with Nicola. But Nicola just didn't come into the house for weeks. But now she comes into the house again. Not really to sleep, but she'll come in and hang out for a little bit. And then she'll go back outside, which is it's good. It, feel, it feels good. I hated it when she wouldn't come into the house. But now she does come into the house. But I do need to, when I get time... I need to brush her out. Try me and Jessica will try to give her a bath, but man, she's hard to get, give a bath to. She will claw you up, but she does. I would like to clean her and get her all fluffy and shiny and new again. Oh, good to know. Lone puppy says, I've noticed your Twitch stream is ahead of YouTube. I believe it. YouTube, even when I press go live, to YouTube, it takes forever before the live stream sh shows up on the screen, probably 30 seconds or so. YouTube's got all of its, its issues, you guys. Oh, I would love to play this game. I'm not going to spend money on it because I just can't spend money on things or have time to play it, but I would love to play it. Uh, uh, DEC... KP20 says, has anyone played South Park Snow Day? It's good. I love the first two South Park games very much. I saw the trailer for Snow Day. It looks great, but I don't know when I'd have time to ever play it. Maybe once the channel gets remonetized. But then it'll be this summer. And I don't want to play Snow Day in the summer. I want to play Beach Day in the summer. Maybe that'll be their next game, Beach Day. Well, they don't have beaches in Colorado. 
damn it. That idea is not going to work. Uh, Vendetta Wild, what's going on? I honestly would rather NBC get the Orville over Disney. Disney has enough sci-fi space fantasy shows as it is. That's a very good point. And I know one of, at least before the strikes, one of Disney's goals was to get all the sci-fi to be the number one leader in sci-fi. But you are right. That does mean that Disney has a lot of sci-fi. So then the Orville might just get swallowed up in all that. Right. So Peacock and I love NBC. NBC has always been my favorite my whole life. Peacock doesn't have a ton of sci-fi. So if they got the Orville, it would be more of a shining star, wouldn't it? That's a good, that's a good point. Of course, we don't know yet what deal has been made. I'm, I don't know. It could go either way. There's good reasons for, for it to be on, on either streaming service, right? Ah, Movie Mouse says in Saskatchewan, they have strict COVID rules on set in Regina. Yeah, I think a lot of places still have some pretty strict rules, but um, maybe the maybe certain productions are able to lessen those rules up to a point. But I know that in 2025, those rules might be just completely gone, and then it'll be a lot easier to, to film things. A backstory episode for Kalon Primary would be good. Okay, we got a backstory in the episode of Season 3 from Unknown Graves. We got a backstory for the original Kalon, what happened to them, why they got destroyed by the new artificial Kalon, uh, which was... Uh, Tennis was the name of that Kalon that told us the story. And we saw from uh, his point of view, we assume. Uh, but it would be interesting to see how Kalon primary, uh, what his story is and how he became uh, the leader, everyone's leader. I mean, uh, it'd be interesting to see what they come up with. Yes. And his relationship with Isaac. Very good point. Maybe they used to be uh well, I'm sure they didn't have a bunch of emotional fun. I would say maybe they're like brothers. I'm like, well, probably all the Kalon consider themselves like brothers, right? It's a whole different way of thinking when you're a robot. Do you think Talia will ever let Ed see Anaya? I think I think Talia is too far gone. And now she has power, which is just going to feed into her ego and into her evilness that we thought maybe wasn't there, but now it's kind of there. But also I can, I can see her, her followers feeding into that and making her worse than she actually is. We know she cares for Anaya, but she also hates the union and humans and all that stuff even though Anaya is half human, I don't think she will, unless it's maybe as a bargaining chip, I'll let you see Anaya. If dot, 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 some horrible thing has to be given up. I don't know. I think uh, uh, Ed will, will find a way to rescue Anaya. I would love to, for us to be able to be on that adventure with Ed. And I think Talia might just have to be uh, shown the door to the universe and, and leave the uni universe forever. AKA she becomes non alive, but maybe as she's becoming non alive right before she's completely non alive, maybe she sees the error of her ways and is only redeemed by death. Hmm. That's pretty deep, but the Orville gets pretty deep, doesn't it? Think we'll have a Jaloja for Topa. Yeah, Topa's got to go to the bathroom at some point, too. Gonna have a, a, a Jaloja for not only Bordas, but for Clyden and for, for Topa. Maybe they'll all get on the same Jaloja cycle, and then we can save a lot of time. They can all have the Jaloja on the same day, or at least the same week. Life's too short. 
that's what that show is with uh, with Warwick Davis, that Ricky Gervais show. Really good show. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. It's very much in the style of like The Office and, you know, that uh, show regular stuff going on slash documentary style comedy. It's 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 funny. And Warwick Davis plays himself. Ricky Gervais plays himself. Liam Neeson plays himself. The Neesons. All right, Movie Mouse is looking it up on IMDb. Uh, Liam Neeson shows up on IMDb for Naked Gun with Akiva Schaefer directing uh, as a sequel to Naked Gun 33 and a third. And Seth is a co-writer with Dan Greger and Mark Hinteman. So Seth is just part of the team. He's a co-writer. He'll probably have some sort of role, maybe a cameo role, uh, something like that. Unless he becomes the full-on lead, but I think Liam Neeson is the absolute perfect person to uh, lead the movie Naked Gun. <laughs> Joe Flippo says, hello. Yep, just walk up like, okay, where do you need me for uh, when, we, uh, when we raid the Orville Season 4 production? Okay, so Liam Neeson is the star. Liam Neeson is playing the role of Frank Drebin Jr. So he's the son of uh, Leslie Nielsen. Nielsen and Neeson. Another reason he's perfect. John Burns, can I bring the protest signs when showing up as extras? LOL. Yeah, I could say my Orville, my choice. Steven, what's up? Steven says, hi, admin of the Orville shitposting page. Has this been confirmed or still speculation? Well, there's nothing. It's not speculation, but it's also not officially. The announcement has not been officially made. But the pages that are making uh, that are saying the Orville has been renewed are legit pages. They are friends of um, not only this channel, but they're friends of the Orville. The Orville knows who they are. They also get invited out to Orville stuff, just like I do. These are legit people. They're, they're not clickbaiting at all. They just have been part of uh, conversations that other pages and other people have not been made part of yet. I had this conversation last year. I was told they're coming back, uh, but that's all the information I had. That I wasn't giving any other information. James at large says, I hope Adrian Palicki changes her mind and will be in season four. I don't even think she didn't officially say that she's not coming back. She just made it seem like she might not be coming back because she might not be up for it, but she didn't legit say that. I think she's just trying to get a better contract for next time. I think for sure she'll be coming back. Everyone loves her. She loves everyone. There's not any like hate going on. Uh, no drama going on. Uh, she's just, she wants, she's an actor and she wants to work. And it, if you want to, and if you're an actor on the Orville, it, there's big breaks between when it's time to work. She just wants to work. So I bet you she's just trying to get a better contract so that once she's done filming for an entire year uh, of acting work, a new season of the Orville, she can instantly go and accept other roles if any are coming in at all. There's all these there's all these great actors out there, but the roles aren't coming in like like we might think because there's so many actors, so many actors. So when they get on a big show like the Orville, they're not necessarily going to get on all these other shows because people are like, well, there's a lot of actors and we can't have the same people on all these different shows because there's a million shows. So it's kind of tough being an actor right now in the in the Hollywood climate with all the streaming services, all the shows. Uh, too much content, some of us might say. Watch the latest news on Axonar. Well, Axonar, the, the next two episodes are coming out. They have been completely wrapped. All filming is done. I know this for a fact. I was there. I saw them finish the filming. Um, 
now they just got to put it all together and finish the editing. I know they got rough cuts and stuff right now, but they will be the whole finished editing, get it ready to premiere. They have to figure out where it's from where they're hoping for this summer to have a big premiere in Hollywood uh, at the Grauman's Chinese theater. I don't know what it's, is it still called that? I think it might have a different name now, maybe pop tarts theater. I don't know. Everything's corporate nowadays, but they're hoping to have the, the premiere uh, this summer at Grauman's. Anyone who can make it, I'm sure we'll be able to get tickets and go. I might be there as well. Uh, if I can make it out there, but also there's other things going on, other uh, Star trek uh, conventions and stuff. So maybe they'll decide to premiere it at one of the conventions. There's a lot to figure out, but the it's coming. And the, and the hope is it'll be all complete and ready and in your faces to watch this summer, two episodes. And I've seen rough cuts and it's going to blow your mind. A much bigger production than the original Axanar prelude to Axanar. This is Axanar. Axanar. It's not a prelude. It's the actual Axanar. Uh, it's, uh, from what I've seen, it's going to blow your guys' minds. No, COVID is no longer a thing. We like to think that, but I still see people walking around with masks. It's out there. It's just waiting. What rough beast comes around at last? COVID does. Tennis, yeah, tennis. That's the that's the the Kalon uh, with emotions. And I'm betting that the next time we see the Kalon in the Orville season four, there's going to be a lot more Kalon with emotions. The newer models, which who knows how new they are. A newer model could still be hundreds of years old. Um, Isaac himself, we saw him live out at, uh, almost, uh, he's almost a thousand years old. He lived out 700 years in one episode of the Orville. Uh, so who knows how, what a new model is. How long ago the biological canines got wiped out. But maybe I'm guessing that we'll definitely see more emotional Kalon the next time we see them. But Isaac's left out. He can't do it. He's an older model. He'd have to erase everything he's been through, all his knowledge uh, to be updated with, with emotions. But then he's a whole new person. <laughs> Richard says, I jello Jeff four or five times a night. That is unfortunate. It is. Barry says, hi, JP. That is some good news about the Orville. We'll return in the future. The Orville's coming back. I've been saying it since last year, but we don't have any details yet. When they're going to start filming. Uh, is it an entire season or just a, some movies? Uh, when are they, what's it going to be? I'm sure it's a season because they got a lot of stories to tell. A movie's not going to cut it. That's not enough time to, to tell the stories that need to be told. But um uh, we don't have any details yet. We don't even have an official word from Seth or anybody yet, but I feel it's coming because the Orville is coming back. You guys, Seth decided he wants the Orville and Seth is powerful enough in Hollywood that he gets what he wants, but he's got a lot of things to do. He's got to, he's got to shuffle things around, figure out when he, when he can get it made. Ferrick Pack says, would you rather have the next season of the Orville be more serious like New Horizons or more quippy like the first two seasons? Me personally, I'd rather have it be not more serious than New Horizons, but the same amount of serious as New Horizons. Because if you watch New Horizons as often as and as much as I watch it, you'll see all that comedy from the first two seasons is still in there. But it's it's it, it it's got a lot more drama surrounding it, so people don't notice the the weird uh, quippy humor like the first two seasons had. But uh, New Rising still has that humor, but there's a lot more drama. Uh, but I want the new season to be the exact same tone as season three. Oh, Barry says, what if Seth MacFarlane asked you to be? It? Yes, whatever it is. I'm not even reading the rest. Whatever he asked me to be, I'm going to say yes, because I owe that man so much. 
in ways I can't even tell you guys about. But I owe that man so much on a personal level. But I can't tell you guys about it because that's between him and I. But I'll do anything that guy says. Almost anything. <laughs> but the things that I wouldn't do, he probably wouldn't ask me to do. Clone Charlie. Well, I have a whole idea on how to bring Charlie back. I'm going to eventually, when I have time, when I can start creating things again and I have to drive around as much as I do. I'm not, I don't think I'm ever going to stop driving around because it's time to buckle down and just make money, money, not a lot of money, but more money than what YouTube has given me enough to pay off some stuff. Eventually um, I'm going to, I want to start creating stuff again. I just need the time to do it. Uh, clone Charlie. My whole idea with Charlie is, is uh, I want Priya Levesque, Char Charlie, Charlie Theron to come back uh, and have saved Charlie just before she died. Just before she died, because she needed somebody with a fourth dimensional mind, which apparently uh, I would say is just not common, even in her time. It's not common. Oh, there's a person named Charlie uh, Burke that existed 400 years ago that has a fourth dimensional mind, and we need a fourth dimensional mind for whatever reason. Uh, I'm going to go back and get her right before she blows up. And then it turns out Charlie has been a prisoner of Priya's for however long you want to be, probably a year or two, because I'm sure that much time will have passed uh, in the story between season three and season four. And then they discover, they read the Orville comes across Priya Leveskin, who doesn't even remember them because her timeline changed. Uh, but they also discover that she has Charlie Burke uh, and that she's been using Charlie's mind for whatever nefarious reason and so they have to save charlie but charlie has to have been going through hell the entire time in order to make it worth it because her sacrifice needs to be worth it so the only way to make it worth it is if she's been having a hell of a time ever since she was saved from that explosion or else that way it's or else it's not worth it uh otherwise it's just you know the search for Spock and they discovered, Oh, it's, he died, but he's okay now, whatever. No, we got to make it worth it. And I think that'll make it worth it. And we get to see Shirley's Theron again. All right. My big mouth says, what would you prefer? The Orville new horizons or new horizons, the Orville in effect, making the subtitle, the main title with the Orville being a brand of new horizons, allowing spinoffs. Well, We've talked about that over uh, the last couple of years. One second. I'm not used to talking this much. My throat's going, Ugh. you know, that happens to me sometimes, you guys. Um, I would rather it be New Horizons, The Orville, because then we can have uh, spinoffs. So it'd be New Horizons, The Orville, New Horizons, The Redenbacher, New Horizons, Deep Space 69. They can keep going. And that's what Disney... Um, Disney is the one that suggested to Seth that he put a subtitle on it. So it's the Orville, New Horizons is the, is the subtitle. And, and I think they did it specifically for that reason, so that the phrase New Horizons can be used throughout the years. Because the Orville, the universe deserves to be a 50-year franchise. We've had Star Trek for 50, 60 years. The Orville should be replacing it and becoming the new 50, 60-year uh, 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 franchise. And the way you do that is you get rid of the, the name The Orville, except for, for the specific show that's about The Orville, and you bring in New Horizons. And then you can have New Horizons, uh, Gordon's uh, Gordon's Garage, something like that. You can just keep going with it for years and years and years. Movie Mouths. I think Anaya will be a bit of a rebel. And Koja as her helper. I think he's the meat seller working in gently falling rain, to be honest. Gently falling rain. Here comes the gently falling rain again. 
TCL or is it TCL Chinese Theater now? What's TCL? I know TLC. Tinder Love and Care. TCL. It would be nice to see Kelly and Ed get back together. Yeah, we got a little hint in the finale of season three when they held hands, but that could mean a lot of things. That can mean, you know what? I love you. You're my friend. You're my best friend. It can mean, hey, let's hook up after this. <laughs> I got some wedding vibes going on down there. What's up? It can mean, uh, hey, let's try it out again. But then it didn't work out. Uh, there's a lot of things. I know that Seth MacFarlane, initially his plan was for Ed and Kelly is for them to never get back together until the very last season, season six, season seven, season eight. Uh, because that whole dynamic between them not being able to be together is really good storytelling. It's really good drama. You got some really great stuff going on. But I also always disagreed with Kelly's reasons for not getting back with Ed, even though she basically you could tell she wants to. She's like, oh, no, the captain, uh, you know, you might have to send me to, to my death. This is that. And you're going to make different decisions uh, because, you you know, because we're together and you love me. I'm like being together doesn't mean anything. He loves you no matter what. So he's going to always be uh, second guessing himself when when he's can send you out into danger because he loves you no matter what. So you might as well be together. Get all, you know, eat some peanut butter sandwiches together. You know, you like Ed's peanut butter, his PB and J. <laughs> oh, news on that. Um, I think Amazon might eventually be given up on Twitch. Andrew says, I don't really like the Amazon owned app. I'd rather watch you here. Oh, I totally get it. Uh, I, I, I think it might, um, the ownership, I don't know if it's going to be a forever deal. Amazon recently with Twitch, I just got an email from Twitch the other day saying that they're getting rid of, um, watch, watch parties, Amazon watch parties, which of course, you know, you can watch. Almost, you can watch pretty much anything that's on Amazon. You can do a watch party with it uh, on your Twitch channel. Uh, they're getting rid of that completely. So maybe Amazon's like, eh, you know, maybe Twitch is too much trouble for us. We're going to go back to selling cat litter on online. Yeah, they should do a reboot, Black Dream. But don't worry, there's going to be plenty of stuff to watch. Right here on this channel. Don't forget Egotastic Fun Time. There's going to be a lot of stuff coming to Egotastic Fun Time while I'm demonetized over here. Because I might as well spend my time, what little time I have, trying to build up that channel. This one's built up. Here, I'm going to give you some stats. Just so you can know what what uh, Talking the Orville is doing for the uh, to get uh, eyeballs on the Orville. So... In the last 28 days, Talking the Orville, this channel you're on right now, if you're on YouTube, has gotten 39.3 million views. Man, I wish I was monetized. Uh, watch time in hours is 435,000 hours of watch time. The last 28 days and has gotten 26,145 new subscribers. And a lot of people are being introduced or reminded or just, you know, having a party with the Orville. All thanks to talking to Orville. So many people are like, what show is this? I got thousands of comments every day. And so many of them say, what show is this? Where can I watch this show? I want to, okay, I've seen a lot of these shorts now. Now I want to see what this show is. So we're, we're, we're building the audience right here with this channel. Uh, but it's not monetized. So <laughs> I'm not getting any earnings from it to help me not have to drive around for 60 hours Monday through Friday uh, to, so I can keep making more content. So I might as well spend what little time I have making some content for uh, egotastic fun time. Get that channel hopefully monetized. And that way, the times that YouTube decides to demonetize this channel, I always have the other channel. And if they demonetize that channel, I'll always have this channel. Oh, it's a whole to-do. The internet, you guys. 
Remember when we just go to a job and then come home, watch TV, talk to people in our family, maybe our friends, talk to them on the phone. It's all internet now. It's all been replaced by algorithms. Tom says, or perhaps she's used like Spock's brain, talking about Charlie Burke. Ooh, D, uh, DCKP20 says, I think that Telltale Games uh, should do an Orville game. Their style of storytelling would suit it well. And it's interactive. And it's very interesting. Telltale Games, if you guys aren't familiar, they're really great story type games. Didn't they do a Back to the Future game, which was excellent? And they actually got some of the actors from uh, Back to the Future to reprise their roles. And they got a guy that sounds just like Marty McFly to do the voice of Marty McFly, but it's telling a great story. Uh, it's as far as gameplay goes, it's more like a, um, almost like a quick time event where you're kind of like, you know, Oh, something's coming at you. You got to move to the left or move to the right. And, but you're getting a, a really great movie quality story the entire time. I think telltale would be, would be good. I don't find telltale games personally to be that replayable, but a lot of other people do. I'm just a stinker when it comes to games. Kimberly, hey, what's up, Kimberly? Says, I thought Liam Neeson was already cast. Liam Neeson is cast. He's playing Frank Drebin Jr. Uh, for the for the new movie. At least that's what I'm told to hear in the comments. That sounds great. That's exactly once I heard Liam Neeson <laughs> was gonna be the star, was gonna be in the movie. I was hoping that's that he was going to be the star, and it looks like he is. I think he'd be perfect with that dry humor. What's up, Thomas Landry? We got to get that Telltale game, Orville game going, you guys. I want to play that now. That sounds really great. <laughs> Pirate says, I'll see all of you in the Orville season 10. Let's go. Oh, wow. I got to scroll down quite a bit. Rest in peace, Yafit. I just saw, you know, um, Vice puts out a bunch of documentaries, the dark side of this, dark side of that. They they have a show. I saw it called, uh, well, I didn't watch it. I just saw that it existed. The Dark Side of Comedy. And it's a bunch of episodes. Each one's about a different comedian and their dark sides and, you know, stuff like that. They have a Norm MacDonald episode. It's their second to last episode of their most recent season. Um I don't have. I didn't have time to watch it, but I want to watch the Norm Macdonald episode and learn all about the dark side of Norm Macdonald. Norm Macdonald's great. He's so good as Yoffit. But I'm sure we're going to have a different Jelly in season four with a different actor playing the different Jelly. It won't be Yoffit. It'll be an offspring of Yoffit, which is still kind of Yoffit. Orville Gate 3 says I've been dead a while. <laughs> I'm talking about like Baldur's Gate 3 or Baldur's Gate, I should say. I uh, Good question. Dark Vamp Lord says, do you think Seth will work more on Ted or the Orville? I think Seth will work on both. Ted doesn't take that long. That's an easy one. Uh, I don't know what she'll do first, though. Will he do Ted first or he'll do the Orville first? Last time was season three. They uh, Season three came out and then they instantly started working on Ted while the whole Orville season three thing was going on. And uh, it only took a couple months to, to get a season of Ted made because Ted is a short show. Uh, it, even though it's got a lot of cool technological stuff going on in it to make the bear move and be animated uh, it's a lot less of a of a stress to make the ted series than it is to make uh, even half an hour episode of the orville oh and i watched ted i love ted so much um i do plan on watching it again i was i was gonna do a um a ted shorts channel but then you know but now I see how YouTube is. I'm like, well, there's no point, I guess. And it's getting lots of views and things like that. And I'm sure it'll get renewed because it's on Peacock. There's there's no uh, there's no 
trouble with getting a renewal announcement from from companies like Peacock. But Disney, I guess, takes a little bit longer. Hulu takes a little bit longer. Plus, I was like, with Ted, I'm like, oh, that's a whole other thing to make content for. I'll be splitting my attention in too many different directions. So every once in a while, we'll be doing some Ted content, but it won't be like a, a hardcore steady thing like I do with the Orville. DJ129. I very much agree. Uh, DJ says, love Norm MacDonald in Dirty Work. If you guys haven't seen Dirty Work, it's a great movie, funny movie, starring, uh, probably written by as well, uh, Norm MacDonald. Uh, such an underrated movie. Completely agree. But it's so good. It's basically Norm MacDonald plays a guy who starts a revenge for hire type business. But it's like more like prank style revenge, not hardcore hurting people type revenge. They could give Yafit a send-off episode with Adam Carolla in the role as Adam has a similar sounding. They replaced uh, Norm MacDonald with Adam on Family Guy. Norm MacDonald originally played the character of Death in Family Guy, and they replaced him with Adam Carolla because he does have a similar voice. I think they probably have enough already uh uh, uh, of, of Norm reading stuff. They probably have enough in the can to piece together a little bit of uh, verbal stuff going on if they, if they need him to say anything before they um, before they have him split and become two new characters. So they can probably piece something together. It's like, hey, I see you later. And then, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a, a hole to do. And then we get the update once he's split. And maybe Adam Carolla will play one of the split Yafits. The Yafit pieces. Yeah, it was like back to back. I don't, we, I don't even think we were finished when they were getting into it. And then they really got into it once all the episodes were out. But then just a couple months later, they were done. I was like, oh, that was nothing. That didn't take much time. Barry says, I have the Orville game on my computer. It is not that good. The Orville Interactive Fan Experience, it is called. Gameplay-wise, there's not much going on, but ex exploration-wise, there's a ton going on. But you're you're not going to be able to play a game. You can fly around. You can look around. You can pew-pew a few things, but there's not really any missions or anything like that. But looks-wise, it's pretty great. Is Seth really going to quit on Family Guy for a while? I don't know. He's only really done the voice of uh, characters for years now with Family Guy. He doesn't really work on Family Guy. He gave up. He handed over the reins to Family Guy years ago, and then they just have him come in to do voices and stuff. And I'm sure he probably has a say on this or that. But uh, he handed over the reins a long time ago. But uh, is he going to quit doing voices? I don't know. I don't think it takes that much time to do voices. They can probably just carve out a week and then go in and do all, all the recordings for a week and then be completely done for an entire season. Deck, okay. Who who I've been calling DECKP20 because it rolls uh, trippingly off the tongue. Um, says, also, I love the way you pronounce my name, JP. It's Deck as in Declan. I'll try to remember that. I know I've gone back and forth a couple times, and I think I just landed on DEC. But it's Deck. Deck KP. Archimage says, I just wish Peacock had kept AP Bio around longer. Yeah, I don't know where AP Bio is located anymore. I've, I think I might have watched one episode when it first came out, but I know people love it, but I never really watched a bunch of it. Though I am really into um, Abbott Elementary. I've been watching that show. Love it. That's my favorite type of comedy is, uh, is the single camera halfway documentary, halfway regular situational comedy. 
Hey, Brian Dawkins says, I hope the PayPal money I sent you helps you and Nicola. Oh, thank you so much, Brian. Huge supporter, you guys. Yeah, I hadn't even been checking. You guys have been donating. Thank you so much. And my mom wants to talk about lunch this weekend. <laughs> but that's I'll have a conversation with her later. And thank you, James at Large, for now following me on Twitch. And that's all the notifications I have on this thing, but there's probably more than that. Let me go. Let me see if there's any specific thanks I need to give. Boom, 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 boom. Let me press some buttons here. Oh, I moved everything around. There it is. All right. Let's give some thanks out to the PayPal donators helping to keep the lights on. Very much appreciated. Mark, thank you so much. Brian, Thank you so much. Emmanuel Shepard, thank you so much. And those are the ones. And then there's other supports going on. Thank you all who are following on Twitch. If there's anybody that is um, becoming a subscriber on YouTube, thank you so much. I don't have any notifications of that, unfortunately. Also, Skillshare sent me an email saying, what's trending on Skillshare? Let's see what made the list. No, I'm not going to look. I'm not going to check out Skillshare. <laughs> but thank you all so much. It actually is almost time for me to, to end the stream. I didn't expect to, end, to start to even do a stream today or even this week. Well, this Saturday, I knew that I was doing that one for the Orville RPG game. We're going to be playing, you guys. Um, stay tuned. For that, actually, after the end of the stream, it'll redirect you to that link for uh, for this Saturday stream. So if you always hit a you know get a notification, get hit the little reminder button, it'll let you know. Uh, Dark Vamp Lord says, "Hey, what's your Twitch name so I can add you?" It's Egotastic Fun Time, and just so you know, there's a link in the description below that has uh, the Twitch page, Patreon, PayPal, Twitter or X as some people think it's called, even though it's not, I don't care what the branding says when you go there, it still says twitter.com right in the, right in the address window. But yeah, there's, there's all kinds of links in the description. It's one of the few things YouTube still allows me to do. What's up old Klein or old decline, old, old decline. That's the way it sounds good to in my brain. Hey JP, you stud. I feel the same way about Seth Trek. Seth Trek, you guys, it's the, it's the best Trek there is. Well, 90s Trek's pretty good. Original series is pretty good. Enterprise is pretty good. There's still some pretty good new stuff, too. Lower Decks, uh, Strange New Worlds is a lot of fun. And all the rest, except for one that I don't appreciate that much. But, you know, I root, I root for them either way. Because there's people out there that like that stuff. And I root for people. And I think people should like the things that they like. Barry says, I had a thought on how to bring Charlie back. What if the aliens from that planet that shifts between dimensions? Well, they are basically all powerful now, that race of, of, of people. Uh, the uh, what, What's that called? the shift i had a whole word that i used all the time but i haven't said that word in many many months but anyway the 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 planet that shifts uh between time streams i guess you can say because when they're in their own uh their own universe time travels at a certain pace and when there are it travels at another pace they are all powerful as we learned in the episode um mortality paradox episode was that episode two or is that episode three? No, it's episode three of, of uh, new horizons. They're basically, gosh, they might be more powerful than the Q. Multiphasic. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Archmage. Archmage knows. Archmage always has the words. Ah, Barry says meant to say, what if one of them is in her body? That can happen. Uh, one of them pretended to be um, uh, Tala. I mean, it wasn't in Tala's body. It just was a whole other Tala character. But yeah, 
those multiphasic people can do anything. I wish we knew their actual name, their actual they're people's name, the people of that planet. We just call them multiphasic. But I'm sure they have a name. Kellyans or something. Oh, that's a question. Which members of the Orville have you not met? I did not meet uh, <laughs> Rob Lowe. I haven't met Rob Lowe. I have not met Charlize Theron or Liam Neeson. Uh, I did not meet Muska. I've met every everyone else. I've met everyone. The main, the main, the main crew. I've met everyone. And I've got to hang out with some of them. Got to hang out with Seth. Uh, Jay Lee. You know, it was really cool. I mean, when it, uh, you know, uh, Peter Macon was really, really nice guy. Chad Coleman is a really nice guy. Scott Grimes is a really nice guy. Seth MacFarlane, of course, is a very nice guy. But all of that, my favorite Orville person, the person who I owe a lot to, not just Seth MacFarlane, Tom Cosentino, producer, editor, uh, uh, lead liaison between the Orville and the Orville fandom, Tom Cosentino. That dude is great. And he has done... So many wonderful things for me, introduced me to people, given me some great advice over the years. But the whole, I've even met Tim Russ. I have, I have met Tim Russ. I, I, I interviewed Tim Russ about the Orville uh, back in 2019 in person at the, um, what's that called? Yuri's Night. So he was great. He, he he was a fan of the Orville. He believes in the Orville. Dice Chuck. Thank you, JP, for being such a wonderful ambassador of the fans to the creative people that give us this great show. Thank you so much. You know, it used to be I was just trying to find something to talk about and try to be, find something to be known for. Now, over the years, my mentality has changed a uh, what I'm doing here with talking the Orville. Now, all I want is to support the show to get people watching the show and to grow this community. Uh, when I got demonetized, what was that? The beginning of last week was the week before I was like, okay, enough. I'm done. Uh, and then, you know, a day or so went by and I was like, no, but the, the, the fandom still needs <laughs> to talk about the Orville and I care about that so much. So I didn't, I'm like, I'm not giving up. I'm still going to show up uh, and, and support the show. That's what it's all about for me. Oh, good question. Hold on a second. You guys are not question, but a comment. Pranakasha production says Jason Alexander, who, who plays uh, Olix, the bartender on the Orville. I have not met Jason Alexander. I'm a huge fan, even way before the Orville. Brian Stone. Excuse me, as my throat's starting to go out, so I'll have to end this soon. But let me end it. Talking to Brian Stone. Brian Stone says, Saw post, the Orville has been officially renewed for season four. There's no proof out there that the Orville has been renewed, but it's not clickbait. There are those of us that are not only in the Orville fandom, but are friends of the Orville production who are part of the conversation that not everyone else is part of. I've known since last year, the Orville's coming back. Not a hope, but I was told the Orville's coming back. But there's no other information. So I'm like, well, I'm just going to hold on to it. 
and just keep supporting the show uh, until there's something else. I guess other friends of the show have been brought into the conversation and are saying, you know, that the Orville's been renewed, which it has, but we just don't know any information. None of us know any information, no specifics, what that means. So the Orville, it looks like it has been renewed. We can say this with confidence that it's coming back. But we don't know anything that's going on, and we can't like hold up a, a tweet or a piece of paper saying, "Oh, here's what's going on." No, all that's going on is we know that the Orville's coming back. But because they're starting to be vocal about it, which I'm guessing is because they're probably just let in the conversation, because they're being vocal about it, I'm guessing that means that the real announcement is bubbling up and and about to come out. Me, I've been personally, I've just been waiting. I've just been supporting, doing a wink and a nudge, saying, hey, it's coming back, you guys. I've been led to believe it's coming back from from production. But I didn't want to say anything super specific because there's nothing, there's no proof that I can hold up, which is what the internet requires. So I've just been like, you know, I'm just going to be on the Renew the Orville train. And when there's finally an official announcement from Seth or Tom or Hulu or Disney or Fuzzy Door Productions, then I'll say, okay, it's coming back. I'm still waiting for that, but I can tell you it's coming back, but there's nothing official I can show you. <laughs> Lone Puppy says, breathe, JP, breathe. I am breathing. It's just not helping very much. What's Seth like in person? Uh, he's always been my favorite celebrity. I grew up on all his shows and movies. I watch all his projects. I've been aware of Seth MacFarlane since 1999 or 2000. Instantly became a fan of his comedy style, the the throwaways, the the callbacks, the make a joke, and then all of a sudden you see a, a scene uh, putting that joke on the screen for you. The first time I saw that, and I loved it. So I've always had my eye on Seth MacFarlane, and then, of course, he came out the Orville and just instantly fell in love with the Orville, and now I really love the Orville after all this time. Um, he's great. He's even better than I thought. Uh, he's a yes ander, which is big for me because I've I've had years of training with improv with Second City. So he's a yes ander. You start telling some stupid joke, he's gonna he's gonna keep it going with you. He's gonna you know he's gonna pretend that he's in on the joke with you. Uh, he's great. He's fun. Uh, we were uh, out, we were eating cookies at the, at the premiere party for the Orville season three. We we're both eating some cookies, just, you know, a little munching on a little bit of cookies they were passing around. And then he, he uh, he's like, oh, excuse me a second. And then he goes up stage and sings two songs. He sang uh, Old MacDonald Had a Farm, the standards version, uh, classic standards version. And then also he sang, uh, oh, what's that song? Frank Sinatra's, well, Frank Sinatra, I think, did both of them. But he did, um, would down Mexico way. Do, 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 do. I can't remember. He, anyway, he did that song and then he comes back and, you know, starts talking again. He's a great guy. He's fun. He's laughing, uh, talkative, uh, just a good dude. Uh, when I was at the after party, I hadn't met him in person yet, but I was at the after party for the Orville premiere. And, um, I'm just there, just chatting with people, and then all of a sudden I hear, JP! And I look over, and there's Seth coming my way. And he's just like, hey, good to meet you, all this stuff. And then he, the first thing he wants to know if, if, is if the music was too loud <laughs> for, for the, 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 the episode of the Orville that we watched on, on IMAX. And so he just wanted to talk about the music and stuff like that. Great dude. And I can tell you personal stuff, he's a dude who cares. Um, if you don't know what to think about Seth MacFarlane, just know he's a great guy. And Bell, thank you so much. And Bell says, love you, JP. Have a great evening. Stay safe out there. Can't wait until you, uh, you're back on. Try some soothing tea for your throat. I'm going to have to do something. I have to go have some honey as well. We got honey in the house. My wife is a fan of honey. So I might have to have some of that, but I should be uh, uh, heading out. You guys, it's been wow, two hours. 
I don't usually do two hour shows sometimes, but not usually. So I'm going to probably have to end this stream right now. I want to thank all of you for your support, helping to keep the lights on with the PayPal link. Patreon is there as well. And there's also going to be with Patreon, some downloadables for the Orville RPG only available on the Patreon page for patrons. Check that out. Also, I'll be uh, showing up more often to give people updates over on the Patreon. So I want to thank you guys for your support. Thank you for being fans of the Orville. And I'm sure we are all looking forward to watching season four of the Orville unfold until it gets onto our <laughs> screens. Uh, but we'll be here to talk about everything that's going on with the Orville as they start filming season four and beyond. Because we need at least season five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Do, 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 do. We'll see you, Dice Chuck. Thank you so much. YouTube user, <laughs> Tom, Scouse, Andy, so many names. I can't get to them all, you guys. My voice is going out. Uh, but I'll see you all very soon. And as always, I hope all your times are ego-tastic fun times and Orville-tastic fun times. Love you. Bye-bye.